Number one gives us a box plot that represents the speeds in miles per hour of 100 cars that passed through a busy intersection. First question asks us what is the smallest value in the set and then to interpret its, its um, value in this situation. So if we look here at the end of the box plot, we see that this far left side is at eight. So eight is the smallest value in our data set and it represents that the slowest car um, was traveling eight miles per hour. What is the largest value in the data set is up here on the right hand side and it appears to be 44. So the largest value is 44, which again in this case represents um, that the whoops that the fastest car was traveling 44 miles per hour. What is the median? So if we look here, remember the median is right in the middle of this box in the middle. So if we look here, the median is at 20. And this represents that, whoops, that represents that 50% or half of the cars are going faster than 20 miles per hour and consequently 50% are going slower. miles per hour. So the median splits that data in half. So half the cars were going faster and half the cars were going slower than 20 miles per hour. Then what is Q1? So Q1 is this um, line here between the minimum and the median and that looks to be at 12. So this quartile one is 12. And you could say this a couple of different ways. Um, it means that 25% or one fourth of the cars are going slower than 12 miles per hour, which the other way to say that would be to say um, that 75% or three fourths of the cars are going faster than that. So the lower quartile, a fourth of the data is below that. So a fourth of the cars were slower than 12 miles per hour and three fourths were higher. And then quartile three would be here. So quartile three appears to be at 24. So then that's going to be similar to this, to, to part D, except for 24, it's going to be um, that 75% of the cars were going slower than 24 miles per hour and 25% were going faster. So however you wanna say that, if you wanna use fractions, one fourth, three fourths, if you just wanna say 75% were going slower, that's fine too. I'm just kind of writing out all the possibilities. Number two, the, da um, the data set represents the number of eggs produced by a small group of chickens each day for 10 days. Select all values that could rep represent the typical number of eggs produced in a day. So there's different ways to think about what the typical amount could be. Um, but if we took a look, like one way to look at typical would be looking at the median. So we could, you know, figure out the middle of this data and the middle is gonna be seven and eight. So we would do seven plus eight divided by two. So that's gonna be 15 divided by two. So our median is 7.5. So I think part A would make sense. Somebody might say that the typical amount of eggs is at the median. I would think another way to figure out typical amounts of eggs would be to look at the mean, which is the average. So we would do seven plus seven plus seven and like add all of these up. So what do we have? One, two, three, four, five sevens, and then one, two, three, four eights, and then a nine. 
and this is how many numbers? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So then divide this by ten. So if we add all of those up on the top, it gives us 76 divided by 10 gives us 7.6 for the mean. So I would say that part B makes sense that you could use the mean for the typical amount of eggs that the chickens laid. Um, so I kind of think those are probably the, the main ones. Nobody would really say the typical amount is nine considering there was only one of those. Um, and eight, there's only four eights, but there was five sevens. So I don't even think somebody would use the mode in this case, even though I don't think mode would maybe be typical. Um, and then not sure where 7.7 .7 is coming from. So I would say A or B is probably a good way since A is the median and B is the mean. Number three, the dot plot displays the lengths uh, of pencils in inches used by students in the class. What's the mean? So for the mean, you're just going to add all of these um, together and divide by the number there are. So we're going to take 5. We're going to add 5.5 .5 twice. We're going to add 6 four times. We're going to add 6.5 twice. And then we're going to add 7. And let's see, how many is that? 1, 2, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 data points. You could do that and then divide by 10. So this is really kind of like the long way, but it certainly works. Um, the other way to look at this is that this is symmetrical data. And so since there's symmetry in this, the median is going to equal the mean. So we can see that the median is right here in this data. So the mean and the median are both going to be six. So you can certainly do it, you know, this way, that's kind of the long way. And then the new way that you learned was with symmetrical data, the mean and the median have to be the same. So we can see the middle here, um, the median is six. So we would know the mean is also six. Number four, the histogram represents ages of 40 people at a store that sells children's clothes. Which interval contains the median? Um, so we know that the median is when you order the data from least to greatest. And we know there's 40 different um, data points here. So the middle is going to be at 20, right? There's going to be 20 numbers down here and there's gonna be 20 numbers down here. And that median would take the average of these kind of two data points. So if we look, um, I would just add this up and see if the 20, 20th and the 21st number are in the same interval. So in this one, there's 10 data points and then there's eight here, which adds to 18. So the 20th and 21st data point is going to be in here because this is going to be six data points. So you have 18 here. So number, you know, 19 through whatever is going to be in this one. So that's going to include this median. So your median is in the 10 to 15 year interval. Number five, the data set represents the responses in degrees Fahrenheit collected to answer the question, how hot is the sidewalk during the school day? So we can see these answers here. There's 25 data points and it says create a dot plot to represent the distribution data. So we're going to need to have a spot for every number on our number line and then we're going to put dots for each one. So we need to go down to 92. I'm actually just going to start at 90 and then I'll just do that's 95, 100, 105. I'm just trying to kind of evenly space these and then I'll go in and put the oops other data in in a second. So this will be 115 and then 120. So I'm just going to make this a little skinnier to put in the other ones. Obviously, you're just sketching it, so it's not going to be perfect. You don't need to, like, use a ruler or anything. Um, 
so now it asks us to plot all of these points for the dot plot. So 92, you're going to have one of them. 95, we have three. 98, we have one. 100, there's three of them. 103, one. 105, there's two. 111, there's one. 112, there's one. 115, there's two. 116, there's one. 117, there's two. 118, there's one. And then 119, there's six. So there's kind of a sketch of a dot plot. Then it asks you to do a histogram to represent the distribution of the data. So for this um, histogram, you can, you know, if you want to, I already kind of have intervals of five set up here, right? So we could just kind of do the same interval with. So we could do, because um, now we know, you know, you could just count these up. So I'm actually going to do that. I'm going to do um, 90 to 95, 95 to 110, and so on. So let's get that written out. So this is going to be 90, and then we'll have 95, 100, 105, 110, 115, and 120. Now for a histogram, you don't need to put in the individual ones because you're just going to count up everything that's in um, that interval. Now, when you do this interval, okay, it's really 90 up until 95. 95 will go in this interval. Okay, 100 will go in this one. 105 will go in this one. So those boundaries, the upper boundary goes with the next interval. So when we're counting um, how many we have in this 90 to 95 category, there's just one. And then 95 to 100, we only count 95. We don't count these 100s. So just one, two, three, four. Then these will be in that next interval. There's four. Just these in this interval. Just these here. And then all of these in this one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So I have to go up to 12 on this vertical axis here. So if we go, you know, this is 5, this would be like 10, 11, 12. So this will be 10, 5. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. All right, so then that first interval, we just have one number. Second interval, we have 4. So you're just going about to that four. Um, four for the third interval, 100 to 105. Two for this next one. Two for 110 to 115. And then 12 for 115 to 120. So the next question says, which display gives you a better overall understanding of the data and explain your reasoning? So you could have different answers for this, um, but the idea would be that you justify it. So, you know, in the first one, it gives you, you can obviously see in there that you do have a lot of data at the 118 mark. So it helps you to kind of see that, um, but not really an interval where down here you can really... Um, see in the histogram that you have like a lot of your data is above 100 and 100 degrees or above 110 even because this you have 12. So I would say for an overall, I'm going to say the histogram. Um, and I'm going to say because it just gives you a better feel of how much, how many days we're over like 110 degrees. But like I said, you could also argue that the dot plot does give you exact data. So just make sure whatever you choose that you give a justification as to why you think it gives you a better overall understanding. 
Then number six says, what is the area of the floor? Is what is the area of the floor in your classroom? A statistical question, explain your reasoning. So this one would not be a statistical um, question. No, because there is an exact answer. So there would be no variability in the um, answers slash data. So when there's no variability, that means it's not statistical. So if they said, what's the typical area of a floor in your school? That would be statistical, but what is the area of the floor in your classroom? No, not statistical.